Hello my dears and welcome to my channel and another installment of my Artist Life Hack series. I hope you guys will check out the other videos from this series by clicking on the link down there which will take you to the playlist. I have a bunch of tips and tricks that I really believe will help you guys so please check them out. They will make your life as an artist so much easier. And in my last installment of this series I shared hacks on how to actually create names for your characters and today's video is super super highly requested by you guys which is how to design and create the backstories for your characters so today that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys so we're going to be talking about how to design their appearance just even hacks on the inception the the inspiration to create your characters design their backstories and even a couple of do not, you know, like things to stay away from when designing your characters. Please stick around to the very end of this video because I really do believe that you guys will get something super, super useful out of this video. Okay, guys? Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. So let me introduce myself really quickly. My name is Lizbeth. I'm a published author. I create manga for a living. And you can actually find my series Sacred in stores in the manga section. And it's been so exciting to know that people are actually supporting my series. And I think as an author, what you guys want to feel is people connecting to your characters, believing in them, seeing them like they're their best friends. And I just feel so like honored and like touched that people feel that way about my character so I want to help you guys experience that as well and hopefully my hacks and my tips will actually help you guys design characters that your readers will hopefully connect to on a very very deep and emotional level. Here are 16 hacks on how to design your characters. Let's get started. So my very first hack is you're not a writer, you're a friend and a detective trying to learn who your character is. Now, I know that might sound a little strange, but the way that I've always designed my characters was in a way where I believe my character already knows who they are, what they've gone through, and they know all about their life. Now, I have to play detective and figure out who they are. Just like a detective trying to solve a mystery or try to figure out who committed a crime, they find the clues, they put it together, and they put a story together. That's kind of what happens with me and my characters. And this will make more sense um, the more we go through all the other hacks and tips and tricks. Because at this point, you probably are saying, but I don't have my character developed. How am I supposed to play detective? How am I supposed to be their friend and figure out who they are? Don't worry, because by the end of this video, you'll have enough information to actually use this hack. Hack number two. Learn to improv. If you're into acting, you might already know what improv is. Improv comes from the word improvise, which means just thinking on the spot in character. So, you know when you're playing with toys and your friend is playing with one figure and they say something and then your figure says something in, in like response? That's what improv basically is. So what I do a lot of the time is I'll actually go into character, I'll put my, myself into the mindset of my character and I'll start doing things and saying things on the spot as if I'm the character. It's kind of like role playing but thinking on the spot like you're not allowed to really um, take a moment to think and type out like you're just doing things like I'll just be doing normal things like cleaning and I'll be thinking of my character and him cleaning because he's a neat freak and everything needs to be clean for him so I tend to do this often and if you do this enough times like you begin to develop mannerisms and characteristics and all types of things for your character so take the time to actually pretend you're them these are not just characters these are real people okay don't tell me they're, they're make-believe so the more you believe they're real people the more you can act them out and the more you'll learn about them hack number three sometimes you can start off with a name and build a character based off of the name sometimes a name is so elegant and so pretty or just so like oh wow it's so cool or it has a really really cool deep meaning to it that actually inspires a character so sometimes you can actually just take a name and build a character off of the name for more information on how to actually come up with a name for your character please check out my video which shares hacks on how to name your characters hack number four 
draw random characters and build on them. This is actually how I created a lot of characters of mine. I would just draw a random person, although I would have a little bit of an idea of what I wanted. You draw a character, you start adding on to them, and you like them enough that you draw them again. And before you know it, this becomes a regular character that you draw often. Sometimes this can actually inspire a character without even meaning to. Some people actually just go in thinking, I want to create a character, and they'll just work on it. But sometimes it happened by accident, so just have fun, draw some characters and see if you like any of them. But of course, this may not work if you're a writer. This is more for illustrators, of course. And continuing with this idea, pack number five. Think about your characters while you draw them. Think about where they came from, think about what they like, think about what they've gone through, who they talk to, who their friends are, if you've created friends for them. Think about how they interact with people. And while you're drawing them, pay attention to what they're wearing, maybe the expression that you're giving them, the feeling that, that they kind of give you. Really think about these things while you draw them. And every time you draw them, try to envision them just existing in the world. What are they doing in your drawing? Do they do that in normal life every day? Like, You'd be so surprised how much you will come up with about a character if you just think about them while you're illustrating them. Hack number six. Do not base characters off of existing characters. A few people have already asked me if it would be okay to create characters based off of existing characters and I just have two words for them. Nick Simmons. You don't want to be Nick Simmons, the man who actually got published, but all of his characters were based off of characters from the story Bleach. So, you know, his readers were like, dude, what the hell? What's going on? This is so much like Bleach. These characters look like Bleach. They remind me of the characters from Bleach. Don't be Nick Simmons. It's okay when you're younger and you're creating fan characters because who hasn't created fan characters, you know? But if you're seriously thinking about publishing a story, it might not be a good idea to have characters that are based off of existing characters. Of course, you, we all know about Fifty Shades of Grey, which are actually fan characters from the characters from Twilight, but they're so loosely based off those characters, there's no way to really know. But a lot of young people want to base their, their own original characters off of existing characters that they really enjoy, but try to stay away from that, especially if you're thinking about seriously publishing your story. You don't want to get into any legal problems, you know? Which is what happened to Nick Simmons, who lost his job and his story no longer published. And if you're thinking, okay, I can come up with a random character to draw, but how do I come up with a random character to draw? That's where hack number seven comes in, baby doll! Hack number seven, start off with something you enjoy, like rabbit or Victorian clothing or voluptuous figures. If you enjoy drawing really petite people or really voluptuous people, draw a person with the figure that you like. Or if you're really into Victorian clothing, look into Victorian clothing, find an outfit you really like and draw it and start designing a character around it who will really look good in that outfit. If you like rabbits, draw a rabbit. Draw a person with rabbit ears. You can build off of things that you enjoy and create a random character that will eventually become your original character that might inspire a story. Or if you already have a story in mind, think about elements from the story and build a random character off of some of those elements. Hack number eight, basing characters off of people that you know. I spoke about this a little bit in my video on how to name your characters because sometimes you'll know people with really cool names or you'll meet people with really cool names and you'll want to use those names for your characters. But you can also do this with how people look and just people that you know. A lot of young people tend to create characters completely based off of friends and family, which can be really fun, but please ask those people for permission before you do that. And try to be original. Don't take their entire life and their entire personality and how they dress. I'm saying just be inspired by them. Maybe they have a really cool way of dressing. Or maybe you really love how they sing or you love their hair. Things like that that can actually like trigger an idea and inspire a character. Hack number nine, learn to free write. I speak more about this in my video on how to overcome and cure writer's block, but I want to speak about it a little bit here as well. Free writing is basically writing without really thinking. You just sit at your computer or, or your notebook and you just write, 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 write without really thinking. And you can actually do this really well with your characters as well. Just have them in mind and just free write. Like I mentioned earlier, you're playing detective. You don't 
really know about them, but your character, in my mind, I believe they already know who they are and they're waiting for you to figure out who they are. And you'd be so surprised what aspects of your character's personality and their past and their life will come out when you are simply writing about them without really thinking. It's incredible and a really great warm up before you start your novel or your comic pages. It's just a really great technique to use and I hope you guys will implement it. Hack number 10. Get used to thinking about your characters on a daily basis. Now, a problem a lot of people have is that they take long breaks from the last time they work on their story and their characters to the next time they work on their story and characters. So much time passes in between that they get a little rusty, they're not familiar with all the details of their stories. And as an artist, you need to practice every day. You need to think about your work and your characters every day. You have to, so that you are constantly familiar with them and they're constantly developing and growing in your mind. And the more you think about them, the more elements of who they are will be developed and before you know it, you will have a more well-developed character. Create a character that can fit into the world you created in your story. I know this sounds like common sense, but I've met so many people and I've gotten so many messages from you guys saying, I created a character but they don't really fit in my story, what do I do? And my answer is, I know it's hard because a lot of times you get really, really attached to your character as they are, but if they don't suit your story, you have one of three options. One, completely change your story just to fit this one character, which doesn't sound realistic to me. Two, change your character around so that they suit your story more. Or three, save that character for a different story because you love how they are already and you really don't want to mess them up or change them up just to fit this story. I know it's hard to do, but when you are creating a story, characters aren't just characters. They are, in a sense, tools to help the story move along. I think of them as real people, but they also help you tell a story. You understand? So make sure that your character actually suits the world that you're creating. Hack number 12. Create characters that complement your more developed characters. So sometimes you'll already have some characters that you're more familiar with and you're just like, you're living in this world on your own. You need some friends. So when you create the friends, make sure that they complement your existing character. Maybe you want to create their mother or their father, brothers, sisters, family members, their boss, their neighbors, co-workers. All these people need to, in some shape or form, complement the character that you already have developed. And I'm not saying they all have to be super nice to them or they all have to be rivals, but you need to make sure that they at least feel like they're all from the same world. See, you just can't throw people together and expect it to just work. They need to somehow help each other and help the story along too. You really have to keep this in mind when developing a whole cast and crew in a sense for your story. Hack number 13, think about how they dress, okay? Sometimes finding clothing that suits your character can actually inspire you to create an entire character. Like if you look if you love punk rock clothing, you may find a really cool pair of platform boots and really want to draw them on your character. Or you don't have a character yet, but you love the boots. You can draw out the boots, draw out a person posing in the boots, and suddenly you have a whole character in a whole new outfit. And you will, you will do this. This will happen. You will eventually create a character just because you like a certain type of fashion or a certain article of clothing. You'd be so surprised what a good tip this is. Hack number 14, remember to think about how your character speaks and their mannerisms. A really good um, example of this is if you had a delinquent character and a nerdy character, they're not going to move the same, they're not going to speak the same way, they're not even going to sit or stand the same way. They are going to look and act very differently because their mindsets are different, their life experiences are different, their world view is different. So remember, this also changes how they speak, how they move, everything. So keep these things in mind when developing characters. Hack number 15, stay away from creating characters that are too perfect. A lot of times people create characters that are based off of themselves that are way too perfect. Maybe they're a more in shape version of yourself. Maybe they know a ton of languages. Maybe they're a straight A student. Maybe they always get the guy. Maybe they always save the day. The whole point is 
don't do it. It is not a character that people can really relate to. It's not a character that people can really believe. And it feels very juvenile. If you want to create a character that will stand up to the test of time, make sure that they are someone that people can relate to. I'm not saying make a damaged, you know, troubled soul, but definitely think about, you know, toning them down a little bit in terms of how perfect they are. And hack number 16, which may be one of the most important hacks in this entire video, is create practice pages and just get started, okay? Most of the development for your story and your characters are going to come from actually producing a story. So start writing it out if it's a novel. Start, start drawing it out if it's a comic or manga. Once you actually get started, you can actually see your characters play out and act out and come to life on paper. And that's when you'll begin to see them developing. That's when you'll begin to see them come to life and you'll know what works, what doesn't, and what should be thrown out and what should be kept but worked on a bit. So definitely just treat it as practice pages. They don't need to be perfect, they just need to exist. The more practice you get, the more you can actually see what works and really master your writing skills. And I'm telling you, it's going to, this is gonna work. This is how I develop my story and I think most people do this as well. It doesn't need to be perfect the first time around, okay? This is just for practice. This is just for developing your skills and your characters. That's it guys. I hope this video was super super useful for you guys. Please give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And So until next time guys, please take care, God bless, and do not be afraid to nerd out. Take care guys.